Hello, ladies and gentlemen. The third Giza pyramid has a strange Inca wall around its outside, not seen on any other Egyptian pyramid. This is most curious. It is known as the Menkore pyramid by modern convention, or the Mykerinus pyramid, according to Herodotus. Fact number one. Although the wall is depicted as red on diagrams, found in books, actually, photographs reveal that it is made up of two or more types of stone. There is a pink white stone. There is also a blue beige stone with a reddish tinge. Also, these casing stones are made of granite, not limestone as on the other two pyramids. Now, some stones are close to white, while Others are close to blue, hence the old name for it, the Coloured Pyramid. In fact, the colours blue and pink we see in this pyramid wall are precisely the colours seen at Tiwanaku. For instance, in the Kala Sasaya Temple Wall, possibly built in later times from the ruins of much larger, earlier stones. Fact number two. Officially, we do not know if this pyramid is finished or unfinished. Herodotus had something to say about this pyramid. He said that this king, Mykerinus, also left behind him a pyramid much smaller than that of his father, of a square shape and measuring on each side 300 feet, lacking 20, built moreover of Ethiopian stone, up to half the height, but that he somehow modified the earlier design, changing a preordained 150-year Giza building plan. I infer this because it had been foreseen that, that the Egyptians should suffer for 150 years under these three kings. However, in order to be easier on the Egyptians and less tyrannical than Khufu and Khafre, Menkore modified this, making a smaller pyramid. Now, according to the Oracle of Buto, for this, he was punished by the gods with a shorter life, causing him much despair. Of course, that legend would imply the pyramids are not tombs, as Giza was destined to be built gradually to a master plan. It simply took three generations of kings to do so, and Menkore somehow altered the plan, supposedly. So, according to Herodotus, these granite stones went up about to about halfway. However, according to some Egyptologists, the pyramid would seem to match a hieroglyph of a pyramid found in Egypt, which shows just the lower area in a different tone. This means the wall may have only been intended to have been along the base, as is currently the case. Look at this beveling here, finished or unfinished, and yet only half this stone is like this. The other half is flush with those near the entrance. What's going on? The stones on this pyramid are just enormous, as long as a man and much heavier. Some have knobs on the bottom. You will see one layer with knobs prominent and one seemingly without. It reflects the Inca, the Inca practice of keeping some of the knobs while filing away others. There are also huge casing stones just lying around, ripped out of the wall. They should be compumetrically catalogued and fitted back into the wall, not left like this. Fact number three. The Giza pyramid stones, though different and unique, are of the same builder as the other two pyramids. Now, the stones on this pyramid are done differently to the casing stones on the other two pyramids. If we look at the remaining stones on the second pyramid, Khafre, we see elongated stones. They made them long, while the Menkore casing stones are generally shorter and boulder-like. Of course, in the Inca world, we see everything made of granite, but in Egypt, we see what these same builders were capable of doing with limestone. 
a close look at the Khafre pyramid shows the same haphazard-like, odd-angled stones as found on the Menkore pyramid, yet fitting precisely together, perhaps deliberately cut and staggered at different angles to make the structure more resilient to shifting earth movements and explosions over time. It is almost as if the builders here said, we are sick of using limestone. Let us again use granite for a change, as we did in the Inca world, or what would become known as the Inca world. You can also see that this type of builder is not one who hated building, who did it as fast as possible on a tight contract, but a person who lived and breathed this. They did nothing else but build, and nothing else but dream up stylish, clever ways in which to build, like the Romans and Italians, therefore finding the best possible techniques. Did the builders use the staggered edge technique in the Inca world, designed to make buildings resilient to earthquake, and use it here to instead make the buildings resilient over a long period of time, should earthquakes one day arise here. Imagine if the recent builders of the reactor in Japan had the same wisdom and foresight as these so-called Copper Age people, perfectionists refusing to do anything other than the best possible job.